Now, the Three Martini Lunch with Greg Columbus and Jim Garrity. And welcome, everyone, to the Friday edition of the Three Martini Lunch, along with Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. Good, bad, and crazy martinis for conservatives today. And, Jim, this is an interesting day for both of our organizations. This hasn't gone public yet, but uh, I think by the time this podcast post. Some people may know about this. I'll just read the statement that was sitting in both of our inboxes today. This is a statement from uh, Donald J. Trump, chairman of the Trump Organization. In this campaign, certain media outlets have proven they cannot be trusted to provide fair coverage to me. I mean, some of these people are just despicable. Effectively today, two of the worst, and I mean the worst of those outlets, are officially Trump Organization properties. National Review and Radio America. Good people working at National Review and Radio America will not lose their jobs. Other people may be a different story. As you saw this week with Corey, and you all saw what happened this week with Corey, I am very loyal to my people. But I must tell you from now on, I expect to be treated fairly, very fairly, by National Review and Radio America, or there may be some changes. National Review and Radio America don't win anymore, and attacking me proves they aren't close to winning. I will make National Review and Radio America great again. So, Jim, big news, uh, shocking news in a lot of different ways. Uh, good to know that we're still in the organizations, and uh, I guess we're going to have uh, pretty good resources going forward and perhaps a slightly new perspective. You know, I, I think of back to Mr. Trump. Uh, Greg, this is just a dream come true. Uh, I, I've been singing his praises since day one, uh, just as soon as I delete some of the things from the National Review archives. I, I, I don't know about you, Greg. I can't think of anybody I would trust more to be the head of a large organization. Um, I already I understand. I just got the text over here. I'm not up in the, the D.C. office, but I understand Trump stakes and Trump waters have been sent over for the celebration. Uh, obviously, some people are a little nervous about this, but I, for one, welcome our new Trump overlords. And uh, I, I think he will make America great again. He'll make all of our employers ever great again. And um uh, I really, my understanding, I don't know about you, I, I just got a text message. Apparently there's some sort of hands-on meeting with Corey Lindowski later today. Um, and Excellent. I'm just looking forward to that hands-on meeting. That's fantastic. Fantastic. And it's good, Fabulous. It's good to be a high, it's, both of we high-class organizations. So we're excited yeah. to be part of, uh, of making both organizations great down the road. But as exciting as that is, Jim, we got another shocker in, in the news today. I'll just read the, the report that's come in. Democratic presidential frontrunner Hillary Clinton's greatest political hurdle – appears to be little more than a speed bump after FBI Director James Comey said Friday that his interview with Clinton convinces him there's no case to be made against the former Secretary of State. Clinton was questioned personally by Comey and other agents about her conducting of official State Department business exclusively over a homebrew server and the hundreds of emails that officials at the department and in the intelligence community have labeled anywhere from classified to top secret. Here's the quote from Comey, quote, she very patiently and clearly explained that she had authorization to set up a private server, that her predecessors had conducted business via private email, and that none of the emails were marked classified at the time they were sent, said Comey. That satisfied all of our concerns. Comey is even more certain in his conclusion after Clinton took the unusual step of agreeing to a polygraph test. Quote, I've been in law enforcement for decades. I've never seen a subject register more consistently truthful answers on the box, said Comey, referring to the colloquial term for a polygraph. Quote, she was off the charts. Jim, what in the world? This is uh, the last thing we expected was Hillary Clinton to be considered the paragon of truth. Yeah, it's a major blow for people who thought this was going to be a key issue in her campaign. I think it, I think it really puts the issue to bed. Uh, none of the expected rumors of Comey's resignation and frustration. I mean, this, this is basically the gold star a plus seal of approval from the FBI, um, and there's you know no one reports of any disagreement in the organization. I mean, like the the, the big thing, the, the one of the interesting questions was you know was this going to lead to an indictment? Uh, was this going to lead to a, a big outcry at the FBI? Right now, it appears from this report, the FBI is not merely saying that she didn't do anything illegal. She did everything like just morally right. They can't even point to anything that says well this would have been. Um, a breaking of previously established precedent or, or ethics rules or anything like that. So I surprising as it is here on April 1st, but the the issue has been, been put to bed and resolved, and uh, everyone can kind of move on from the story of Hillary and her server. 
Well, those two stories would be big enough for both of us today, and certainly the second one uh, for the state of the presidential race and perhaps the fate of the country for four or eight years to come, depending how everything shakes out. But uh, we got another kick in the shins for our crazy martini today. After doing a little research, Nevada residents have been ranked as the most informed and politically engaged voters in America, according to a new study from the Rocky Mountain Policy Foundation. In an exhaustive study of voting patterns and exit polls spanning more than a decade, the report shows voters in the Silver State easily outpaced their nearest rivals in political knowledge in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Florida in grasping the details of core issues and having a clear understanding of the records of their elected public officials. The Rocky Mountain Foundation further stated that Nevada voters are by far the most clear-eyed when it comes to politics, exercise the most reasoned judgment in the ballot box, and display the most trust in their elected officials even after completely implausible explanations of exercise equipment malfunctions that seem far more likely to be the result of physical violence. So, Jim, this is an exhaustive study. And uh, of all the states, uh, Nevada, it's not even close. It's a clear winner here. Yeah, Uh, it really is a black eye for the 49 other states (laughs) uh, come up so far behind. You know, look, when you had sent this to me this morning, I was like, wait a minute, this has got to be like a one-year blip. But I think what you know, they put in all the data, and you can see it year by year, and it says that, you know, that the state voters did the best, were the most informed, and exercised the clearest judgment. Uh, 2008, uh, 2012, and I think this, the striking one, their highest one, was in 2010, uh, which is a real feather in the cap for uh, uh, everyone who won election that year. And I, you know, Greg, I think you and I just had a look and say, way to go, Nevada, way to go. Way to go, indeed. And it's only the start of the month, Jim. I can't even imagine what will unfold the rest of April. Indeed, indeed. It's, you know, this is an April 1st to remember. I, I think it's just the one you're just going to mark it down. And uh, look, I'll, I'll see you at the Trump staff meeting later today, right, Greg? Yeah, save me a spot in the conference room, Jim. I hear there's an excellent selection of Trump wine as well. And hopefully, if they're taking orders, uh, my steak will be medium well. <laughs> Looking forward to it. See you Monday. Hopefully. See you Monday, Greg. Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Columbus of Radio America. Thanks for being with us today. And join us again on Monday for the next Three Martini Lunch.